Facebook as well from the CPC Congress Practical Skill Zone. Come and join us live with Jo today. She's going to demonstrate to us. Do you want to tell you introduce yourself to us? Yep, so I'm Jo Blaine. I work at the University of Portsmouth. I'm a teacher practitioner. And what we're showing you is um, some of our simulation equipment. This is um, uh, simulation equipment we're using here at the CPC to demonstrate how we would manage a patient with anaphylaxis. So the, the setting we've got here is um, a community pharmacy um, and it's uh, simulating an uh, anaphylaxis that may occur in a patient after they've had a flu vaccination. So can you see that poster over there, the pharmacy flu vaccination process? So we have some poster from the yeah, so so what, what we what we try and do is we try and offer delegates um, an opportunity to see scenarios um, using the sim men that would be suitable for a hospital environment but also a community environment. This is one of the ones that we've uh, put in this year to simulate um, a, a scenario in a community uh, environment where someone's had an anaphylaxis. And because of the um, increase in um, the number of flu vaccines that are actually being given in the community during the flu season um, by pharmacists, and we decided to make this uh, anaphylaxis following a flu vaccination. Now obviously that happens very, very rarely and again one of the importance of having a simulation is to um, offer opportunities for pharmacists to, to simulate um, managing anaphylaxis um, without actually having to do it the first time when an anaphylaxis occurs. So we've got um, the, the, the simulation that we've got here, we actually have a programme where we can simulate an anaphylaxis. Here, the beginning of the analysis. So um, we, we use it here with um, with monitors. Obviously, those monitors wouldn't be used in community. We use it uh, purely to sort of demonstrate some of the, um, the changes in parameters that would happen with anaphylaxis. Yeah, so it's got SATs there. Again, we wouldn't measure those in, in community. You could measure a patient's pulse in, in community and a respiratory rate. But again, it, this is purely to sort of um, make, make those changes of parameters more visible for our delegates that are coming to see um, the simulations. And we then have the opportunity, once we've recognised the anaphylaxis, to administer um, adrenaline to a patient. Yeah. So, provide our delegates with, um, with trainers and um, we have EpiTepen and, and JEC trainers that we use um, and then we get them to simulate the administration as well of course of pointing out that at the same time as uh, anaphylaxis is recognised and is treated that a member of staff also phones for an ambulance as well. Um, so we, we try and highlight as much as um, in terms of management of anaphylaxis we try and um, include as much as uh, what would be in the PGD um, and in the SOP within the, the um, community pharmacy as well. So we get the administration. Yeah. Yeah. So there we are. Yeah. So, so that's 10 seconds. seconds. 10 seconds there. Yeah. And then run. So that's the purpose of procedure we can take in the community pharmacy. So yeah. then what we do Later, yeah, we'll see what happens next. Is we were then advance to having administered the um, adrenaline, yeah, so that we well can the then see. Well, so, yeah. at the moment, the, some of the parameters are still increasing, yeah, but what we'll that. see is as it starts That's taking great. effect, um, it will go back down. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, the, uh, the reason it's yeah. going up at the moment is because I advanced it to to severe and then we're going back to here we are this is we've gone from severe yeah, and, and going we're now yeah. going on to the adrenaline's being administered so the heart so rate is going back down the respiratory rate will go down yeah. and the sats will go up so we have the respiratory rate 32 going down 30 to go down more and then the oxygen levels are going up and the heart rate is going down so it's quite interesting to see what happens um, it's really interesting, I think, so to have in a community pharmacy as well to check the oxygen levels. You know. Yeah, although we, it's not the sort of thing that you would yeah. normally be able to. You wouldn't have a, a, a way of, of, of monitoring that in the community. I mean, we're mainly sort of showing that within the simulation to um, 
to then use that as an opportunity to describe some of the other symptoms the patient may be, may be um, uh, describing, such as tingling lips or even blue lips um, as part of the anaphylaxis. Yeah, so you have them over here. Yeah. So what, what we have as well is we have um, uh, copy here of the algorithm for the resuscitation council and this is the initial treatment algorithm rather than the full algorithm because it's the one that would be suitable for community pharmacists to use um, in, in, uh, in a community pharmacy situation rather than the one that would be used in a hospital setting. But again we could do this anaphylaxis um, scenario using a hospital setting and the full um, resuscitation um, algorithm, or rather anaphylactic algorithm as well. Always to be prepared to go online and online. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Take the whole procedure, take an emergency uh, action, yeah. and uh, get all ready, just in case it happens. Yeah. So thank you very much, John. Okay, no worries. Demonstrating community partners and the importance of taking the steps, especially when you have an emergency, to know what you have to do and how to act and how fast to act. Thank you very much. Thank you.